Welcome back, everybody. We hope you enjoyed Ninja Baby. I'm Karen Davis, Senior Film Programmer for Mill Valley Film Festival. I'm a woman with massive amounts of excessively wild, dark, curly hair and sensible black glasses. I'm wearing an orange scarf. I'm in my kitchen in Berkeley, California, and I am delighted to be joined by the director of Ninja Baby, Ingvild Sve Flieke. Welcome to Mill Valley Film Festival and congratulations on Ninja Baby. Thank you very much. And uh, it's, it's, very, it's a pleasure to, to be with you today. I'm here in Oslo, Norway. It's, uh, you know, it's evening, Friday night. It's, so it's, uh, I'm here with also my glasses in my house and uh, I'm about to make dinner for my, my children soon. <laughs> Great. So let me pitch a few questions and we can have a little conversation. Um, I've read that Ninja Baby is loosely based on a graphic novel or maybe not so loosely based about a 16 year old who discovers she's pregnant. Now, in the film, we know that Raquel, uh, the character, is is older than that. Can you talk about what drew you to the graphic novel and the changes that you and your team made to turn it into Ninja Baby, your film. I mean, is Ninja Baby in the original graphic novel? Did he come afterward? Just a little bit about the adaptation and the scripting. Yeah, the, the, the idea came in the sound mixing of my first feature. This is my second feature. And um, I wanted in that, it, that was a multiple story of several female characters. And one of them were unwanted pregnant and I, I had been pregnant twice myself, very wanted pregnancies, but you know, all that, I just felt that, um, is it possible? I wanted to explore, is it possible to, to make a movie about a pregnancy? That, that was kind of my first idea that, because I didn't have the room or the space for it in my first feature, because it was so many other things that had to be, other characters and so, uh, and then I remembered Inga Satter's wonderful graphic novel, Art of Falling. It came out maybe four or five years, four years earlier. And um, I read it when it came out. I knew who she was. I knew, I, did, I hadn't worked with her, but I, she was, I knew she was an animator. And I also wanted to explore in my next movie, uh, to try and explore how to mix animation and live action and mix and use animation in more of a narrative way that you can kind of use it uh, not as garnish on top of the story or like that it had to uh, express, you know, humor or emotions. And I love the way animation just gives you this abundant you can exaggerate everything so much in animation so um i wanted to see how to do that and i also um inga satra wrote this fantastic um uh, small cartoons about and books about the grubby girls which are a little bit older but i really also felt connected to them and so i just had to contact her and ask if she wanted to join me for my next movie and we worked on it on and off for a couple of years and then while we were doing that i did i got to know Yuan fasting who also is a wonderful script writer that uh, was the the creator of this series that i was working on and we really connected on I don't know how to say, but like tone and 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 how to how to tell, yeah, humanity in a way, you know. And so uh, when I had to go back and finish the script because we already got some funding from the film institute, and this was what I was supposed to do. Johan Fasting came on board and helped us finalizing, and he came also with Ninja Baby because Ninja Baby is not part of of uh, the art of falling and um but we already have this you know but from the very beginning i knew that raquel had to be older because i wanted her really to be old enough to take care of the child so it, the dilemma wasn't that she was not she had to be helped by her parents or anything i didn't want that to be part of the story i wanted that ambivalence 
uh, the, the feeling of ambivalence becoming a mother. And I think that applies for both wanted and unwanted pregnancies, that you don't know what's coming, you don't know what's going on with your body, you don't know if you're ever going to be a good mother. I still don't know. You know, you, you kind of always kind of wonder, and it's so strange and so undescribable. So I thought maybe it's possible to make a movie about these feelings. So that's what I set out to do. Yeah. Uh, another question for you. There are so many great characters in addition to Raquel in the film. It's hard not to love them all. They're so relatable. They're so lovably imperfect. Um, uh, but the humor and the drama really do revolve around Raquel's story. So can you talk about who she is? You've made her older than in, the graph in Inga's graphic novel and what you wanted your audience to understand about her. You've hinted at some of the ambivalence of motherhood, uh, but there's a lot more going on in her life about so many projects unfinished, et cetera. You wanna talk about um, the character of Raquel? I think uh, in most of my work, I try to, I, I have this desire to, to, to broaden the space that women can operate on film and also eventually in real life. <laughs> so we don't have that. Um, it's about finding characters that are not uh, molded into something that you have, that that's not, that's not true in a way. I don't know. I, I feel I, we set out to make a character that was true and normal, the ones that we know, and and a character that you can that have flaws like everyone has, and a, a character that is unpolished, is not polished. She's just feels real and has um, conflicting feelings and and um, is, you know, she doesn't want to shower. I mean, not everyone showers every day and she doesn't shower every day. I mean, she doesn't uh, blow dry her hair and, and, and uh, what do you say, take off her hair on her legs and all of that. I mean, she's just, and I feel we need to kind of broaden that space. It's different ways of being a woman and it's, in cinema and it's so that's why I, I kind of I'm drawn to those characters very much that kind of they're true but the but they're not the the normal thing you see broadcasted everywhere you know yeah 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 that's what's so wonderful about her her contradictions her self-criticisms her opinions that can change but she feels so intensely about them from moment to moment, even if they're the opposite of what she felt before. Uh, and what is this uh, behind the scenes thing I read about use of olive oil in her hair, like lots and lots of it. Can you talk, give us a little production story about her hair? Yeah, because you, you know, uh, when you, when you do film, you always have to, I mean, even though you don't wear you know, I've been told that you have to have a little bit makeup to not to make people look like they don't wear makeup. I didn't want want her to be put on makeup without going out and clubbing. When you know, when you go out clubbing, you put on makeup. But she was not that kind of girl that every morning got up and and um, uh, so we didn't have any uh, any makeup on sets. So it was just the only thing we did was that. We have a, we had this wonderful, I had this wonderful um, assistant and she did so many things and she also put in ol olive oil in, in uh, Christina's hair every day. So we used maybe one liter, I don't know in, in, in American, but it's like a bottle of uh, uh, cheapest olive oil that you can get just to make her, I mean, you don't really see it all the time, but you know, if Christina had to wash her hair, but we had to have continuity in the in the hair and everything. And it's, so the we wanted it to look normal and natural. And it was kind of, that was the tool we used to, to make that look kind of- Keep it greasy, keep it stringy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's it's wonderful and probably good for the hair. So yeah. uh, can you talk also a little bit about the character of Ninja Baby himself? We know that he's a voice inside of Raquel. He's foul mouthed. He's selfish, just like Raquel, kind of an anarchist, kind of cynical about life. Even before he's experienced one day of life, he has such opinions <laughs> about life. So for who for so so since that was a a character created by the screenwriter you worked with and yourself as developing it as the director. Who who is the ninja baby? Who who is that character? It is, I mean, for me, he that is her um subconscious that you kind of talk, you know, you have those moments that you are in doubt or that you talk to yourself, but you you probably don't. I mean, normal people don't talk out loud, but you kind of have those discussions. And and I, and also, um, we had so much fun creating this character because we didn't really know her, his age. We tried so many voices and Inga drew so many uh, different uh, fetuses, like how ugly it, because, you know, you know, when you have a very small baby or a fetus, it's not, beautiful. I mean, it can be really frightening also to look at. So we had different version of it and uh, different versions of, of uh, the voice. And I had never created an um, uh, animated character before. And I understood so well the, you know, sometimes when I see dubbed TV when I'm traveling, you kind of see that the voice is not fitting the body which is something that I really, I became very aware of now that you had to have a voice that fits the, the attitude of the, the character and also the body of the drawings, you know, that it, it really had to fit. So, you know, we tr tried children, it became very sad uh, and, and, and not funny at mm -hmm. all. And we wanted it to be a funny character. We wanted to, to have that kind of look at her um, discussions. And um, we just wanted, I just loved the, the, the we ended up with the, this teenage, um, teenage um, kind of uh, attitude on him that, you know, he's, he's not nice, I think he's kind of rude, but he, he really wants her to love him. Yeah. You know, he really wants her to say, I want you, but he's not saying that. He's being mm -hmm. very rude, trying to get her attention mm -hmm. and, and, you know, really pulling up. And I, I feel that really connected with her still being a little bit teenager, but really being a grown up, you know, and all that transition in that uh, time in your life, I found very interesting. Yeah. Mm hmm. And and uh, on the subject of combining the animation with the live action, one of the very unique things, uh, the many unique things about this film, how was it uh, for you as a director to work with your actors, primarily with Christina, um, uh, to direct her to always be reacting in the scenes with Ninja Baby to the animated character that was not there on set? Uh, how did that process work out because she's so receptive. You're sure that he's there. She's so good at responding to him. Yeah, we had planned those scenes very thoroughly. Uh, so we knew with the photographer, Marianne Bakke, we really knew every picture and also Inga Satre, who is the animator. She's the only animator she's done. It's a one woman animation show, uh, all of it. So, So we were there, all of us, working together, knowing and planning, lighting the room where he is coming and, and everything. And um, and even the production designer, you know, you have that that bread with the, the pate on it that has been under her bed for months. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we planned that, you know, so that has been, we you know, when we did that shot, we're like, okay, bring it out, you know, and we had all of those things. And, um, but it was really, nice working with Christina because she's also I mean she's she's a great actor but she's 
also a designer and uh, she's worked as a production designer in films and she's also uh, uh, drawn in books. She's made books, uh, made this lovely book for children with a lot of wonderful drawings. So for her to play this character, um, drawing and holding a pen and, and being in your space, uh, she's, you know, that's where she loves to be on her desk, making her drawings, you know, just uh, being on her own. And uh, it really, I don't know, it, maybe it felt natural to her <laughs> to do that. But and also the technical parts, you know, you really it, we were such a small crew. So we were all in those scenes, you know, we were all around her and saying, look there see that, take that pen, uh, look at that. You know, it was uh, technical, but it didn't, it felt also like she just, um, she, she's very present. You know, she's very present in those moments. And also one very wonderful thing is that we have, uh, we had an actor, not the actor who plays Ninja Baby. This is actually the crucial point. I forgot, almost forgot about that, but we had, um, an actor that um, I had worked with before that came in and and played with her with the lines of Ninja Baby. And she had an in-air piece. So when she talks to Ninja Baby, she actually talks to the actor. And mm -hmm. he heard her, he was in another room. So mm -hmm. they were in separate rooms, but she really had someone to talk to because it would be impossible to play these scenes and reacting uh, without having someone to read and usually on film sets you get you know you get an assistant to read the lines yeah and I didn't want to I didn't want the scenes to be I really wanted them to be emotional so she had someone to to play against as an actor mm -hmm. and he's a very good actor so yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. you mentioned her Christine um, who couldn't join us today though I, I send out our healing energy healing for her. I know she yeah. wanted to be here, but um, but uh, yeah, that she's also a production designer and and uh, the production design aspect of this film is wonderful. It comes straight from an artist's studio, all messy. It fits her character, just like her clothing. So I'm not surprised that all of that um, was so fully present and inhabited so well by the actor because she also knows the value of the production design. She's an artist herself, so that, that's very informative. Um, I wanna broaden the discussion just a little bit as we close it. Uh, I love how subversive the film is. It gives us such unexpected characters who seem one way, but then they really surprise us to reveal something totally unexpected about themselves, particularly the two men in Raquel's life. And of course, the female characters are also subversive in how they act. Uh, we've discussed, you know, raunchy and dirty in the ways that we usually associate with young men. But there are other messages also within the film about choice and motherhood and fatherhood and pursuing one's dreams, no matter how impossible or how selfish they may seem. So can you talk about what you'd like the audience to come away with from seeing Ninja Baby other than blood and suffering? <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit what I talked about, uh, about when, I, when we talked about Raquel's the main lead characters um, character because I, I really believe that um, men also need to have a broadener space in film to to play out and and seeing these uh, men and and also the the, the topic of unwanted pregnancies uh, it's. I wanted to question, you know, uh, who's who's uh, who's going to end up, you know, who's response. I mean, I'm not saying anyone is responsible, but I'm saying I, I want to. I kind of want to just say that, you know, give the men a chance. They're wonderful parents, you know. Don't don't pu push them away. Just let them do it their way, and it will be wonderful. And I see that around me, and I think it's very important that we keep um, keep letting people choose to 
take their own decisions about that. Not we we don't need to grow uh, total um, uh, rigid. Yeah, the rigid the way that everything suppose you know oh wonderful you're pregnant oh wonderful she's staying home with the kid mm -hmm. oh he's going at work i mean there's so many ways to do this and it should mm -hmm. be more uh, yeah it should be more uh, normal <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a beautiful ending, how you wrap things up in such an unexpected way. And Leslie, can you tell us what's next for you? Um, we really want to follow what's coming up next. Oh, well, that's Norwegian history. <laughs> I'm doing, um, actually, I am do, do now work on, on some new feature film projects. Uh, but uh, before, I think, bef surely before I, I'm... I will be able to do those. I will do a TV series here in Norway with Johan Posting, who helped us with, who did very much great stuff in the script um, with Ninja Baby. We're doing a period piece from the 70s. It's a political satire from mm. f about the labor, big, big labor party in Norway. And our first female prime minister who came into office in 1981. So we're following her throughout, you know, the end of the 70s. And yeah, and um, yeah, it's a crazy story and um, scary to tell because it's based on, on actual happenings. But I'm very excited. If it's scary, it's it's um, usually interesting. I, I feel. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so very much for joining us and our audience at the Mill Valley Film Festival. We're sorry you can't be here in person with the next one. We hope to see you live in front of the audience at the theater. And thank you again. Thank you. I would love to be there and you enjoy the festival. Thank you.